Howdy guys. So, maybe you're in the market for a camera, man. If you go and Google, and look all over the internet, the vast majority of what you'll find, the tutorials for stuff and everything, is for newer stuff, like uh, Mercedes Sprinter vans, Ford Transits, uh, whatever the Dodge versions of them are. You know, and that's all well and good. Those are really good platforms. You know, they're big, they're square, you can stand in them. But uh, I don't know if you've tried to buy one. Um, it's a new car, so it's quite expensive. They're generally built on, you know, somewhat of a truck frame. Um, they're built to be, you know, fleet vehicles, especially if you buy like the Mercedes equivalent or some of the nicer ones. They're equipped very nicely, have a lot of features and all that, and that's all well and good. But if you're like myself and Morgan, who uh, aren't really interested in spending 80 grand on a camper van when camping investment is only at about thousand two thousand bucks it's a little less appetizing so what i struggled to find when i was looking was people that have done this kind of conversion to an older van like 70s 80s even some of the 90s stuff you could find things on regular vans like regular g10s g20s g30s um the chevys or the, the dodges or the fords the econolines and that sort of thing but there isn't a lot for this type of thing. And there were quite a few of these things and you know, we see them driving around even where we live, there's quite a few. So I thought it would be not a bad idea to do sort of a pros and cons. You know, if you're looking at buying one of these older vans, you know, what are the upsides, what are the downsides? And this, I'm gonna preface this by saying that this is only going to encompass the actual purchase of a vehicle. It's completely gonna be circumstantial, especially since these vans are getting up there in age. Um, but this is sort of what we found, at least with this one and some things that you'll probably find among other ones. So, so for the good, um, so to start off with, um, these vans are almost always going to be cheaper than buying a new Sprinter van or a uh, Transit van. Um, this one was incredibly cheap. Um, this one was sub thousand dollars to purchase, but that's because some of the other things we'll get to. Uh, some of the other things uh, that are good about them um, they were incredibly common. So this, this van is a 1975. So in the 70s, the trucks, vans, and uh, SUVs of the era um, were all quite similar as far as running gear. So engine, transmission, drivetrain stuff, it's all very similar and very interchangeable. Um, so because of that, uh, parts are incredibly cheap and easy to get. To get. Um, this engine, for example, was in everything. Cars, trucks, vans, whatever. is largely the same, the 5.7 liter V8 at the 350 cubic inch. Um, same with the transmission, this is a three-speed automatic. It was in lots of the trucks, vans. Um, and then brakes are all very similar. So they're even cheaper to get locally. Um, some of the other good stuff, um, they're very easy to work on. Um, you know, everything's really simple. Uh, it's easy to learn, you know, mechanics on this sort of thing. Um, there's not as much of it on the internet, um, but the reason for that is because um, people just know how these things work. So that's handy. Um, some of the other things, because it's inexpensive and because they're fairly common and modular and there's not a huge investment up front, it's a lot more justifiable to do what we're doing. So tear it down, rip it out, change it out, you know, customize it, paint things. Um, it's just easier to justify that because the upfront cost wasn't as much. And because, you know, especially with this one, you know, it's not really, it's special to us and it's special because it has a high roof, but it's not anything, you know, that special or rare or unique. It's a Chevy G10 um, with a camper outfit on it. One of the benefits of this type of van versus just any other van in the air is this one had a camper conversion done on it sometime in the eighties, we're pretty sure. So it has a high roof, which means you can stand in it. And that's huge. Being able to do that is the reason we own this one. It's because you can stand in it. It's about six feet on the inside. I'm shorter than six feet. It's great. Now, there's a, a bit of bad, um, but it's only just because nothing is both cheap and really good, you know? So some of the cons, well, for one, the age. So with an old vehicle comes a lot of years of care and lack of care. Um, this van seemed to not be driven that much in its life, but whoever did the camper conversion back in the eighties, well, let's just say the eighties craftsmanship and workmanship and quality, uh, 
isn't there. Um, you know, some of the rust and body repair they did involved using a lot of spray foam, the paint work that was done back then. I'm pretty sure the paint was rolled on with like a roller and just that sort of thing. You know, old vehicles, not every vehicle was taken care of. This one I think was saved from being neglected by just never being driven. I think this vehicle has spent most of its life in a field, in a parking spot, which is both fortunate and unfortunate. Um, some of the other things with it, uh, with it being old, so this vehicle is a 75, I'm not exactly sure the year, but this vehicle only has a five digit odometer. Now, if you can do math, that means that it'll only count up to 99,999 or 100,000 miles. Um, most vehicles throughout their life will accumulate more than 100,000 miles, which means in this sort of thing, if you're not aware, when a five digit odometer hits the maximum, it rolls over back to zero again, which means that this odometer reads uh, 66,342 miles. Um, and we always say plus or minus 100,000. Um, so basically when you're buying something that's this old, the mileage is going to be, for all intents and purposes, unknown. For this drivetrain, they're quite stout. They were quite robust in the sense that they were so simple um, and really the engineering behind them just, they're so simple that they're really robust. Um, so because of that, I'm not too worried about the mileage, but that is something to keep in mind is if someone has the mileage listed at 66,000, it's probably more like 166,000. This van is coming up on 50 years old, unless it sat for most of its life, which it could have, um, that's gonna be a thing as well. Um, some of the other stuff, um, they weren't built great. Um, fit and finish is not good. And I think a lot of that is, it was like that from the factory. It's just the way it is. They're simple. Um, they stood the test of time, but not without some scrapes and bruises. Um, another thing with a vehicle being this old, if you're going to pay top dollar for a van this old, it's not going to be rusty. If you're going to pay what we paid, it's going to be rusty. There is a lot of rust and body rot. Um, and kind of questionable fixes on this vehicle as far as bodywork goes. Um, obviously, uh, there's some holes in the floor. Um, if you're really trying to seal these things up, it's, there's gonna be a lot of work that's involved with that. Um, that is kind of the common theme with something that's this old, you save a lot of money up front, but you, know, you have a lot more work that you need to do. Um, oh, with the age, so this one has a fiberglass top. Um, it's awesome because it's fiberglass, so it's all one piece. Cons, it's probably gotten a little brittle over the years. It's a little harder to justify like screwing a big solar panel set up onto the roof just because of the unknown structural integrity. Um, one of the other big cons of this running gear, although it's very robust um, and it will probably outlive the body of this van, um, it is terrible on fuel. I haven't mathed it out because the fuel gauge isn't great and I've never actually filled this thing up completely, but. This has a 30, 35, 36 liter gas tank. So it's about 136 liters, um, which today's gas prices is 250, $250 worth of gas. It has a big V8 that was designed, that was built 40, 43 years ago, um, 47 years ago, um, and it was probably designed 60 years ago. Long and short, it gets terrible gas mileage. Um, in miles per gallon, single digits for sure. In liters per hundred kilometers, it's got to be close to 20 liters per hundred kilometers, if not more. Uh, even on the highway, you can see the fuel gauge moving. There's a reason the gas tank is as big as it is. It's because it needs it. The other side of it too is as far as emissions go, um, this has nothing. Um, it's carbureted. It has no catalytic converter, and that's not a modification. It just never came with one. You can smell it. You can hear it. Um, it is bad for the environment um, in both fuel consumption and fuel efficiency. Um, that's a problem. It's something you got to keep in mind. Um, that is something I thought of before we purchased this as part of the operating costs. Although mechanical maintenance was going to be less, you know, just basic oil changes and services. Um, I knew we were going to be offsetting that to a point in fuel consumption. Modern vehicles are very efficient. Um, and some of them being diesels will get really good fuel mileage. This is not, this is an old lazy gasser that gets just bad mileage. Um, just the way it is. Um, some things to keep in mind if you're looking at one that you're likely pulling out of a field. So when we bought this van, it was advertised as not running. 
Um, turned out it was not running because it was out of gas, but I was anticipating having to do more troubleshooting. So if you see a van listed for a thousand bucks and it's got pictures of it in a field, especially if you see that the grass is growing around it, but has been mowed everywhere else. It has been sitting there for a while. Um, so there's some potential problems with that. You know, rot, mice, uh, water and weather sitting in here. Um, it could have been used as storage by whoever owned it. So it's gonna have a lot of garbage in it. But there's some other things to keep in mind. So uh, gas gets old and it congeals and bad gas going through an engine is bad for the engine, but it will also prevent it from running. So in this case, I think it had some ga bad gas in it. it. Didn't run very well when we first got it. Tried to use some fuel cleaner and change fuel filters and stuff to try and get it to run better. But I don't know if you're pulling it out of a field, I'm no mechanic, but I know just from what I know that if, especially if they tell you that it's been sitting there for five, 10 years, um, you are not gonna wanna drive it very far on the oil that's in it. The oil is gonna be old, crusty and congealed. It'll cause it to run poorly. It might even damage the engine. Same with transmission oil, uh, gear oil, you know, antifreeze. So if you're gonna go pull it out of a field, you wanna make sure that you either bring someone that's more mechanically inclined or know what you're looking for. Make sure it has coolant in it, make sure it has oil in it. If you can, check the transmission fluid, make sure it has fluid in it because if you drive it dry after it's been sitting in a field leaking, whatever, it could be a bad day. Um, the other thing with this vehicle, when we pull it out of a field, the brakes were not good. Uh, I had no brake fluid in it and um, that was a red flag for me. That's why we didn't drive it the five hours it was to get home. Um, because the brakes could be leaking, could be a line that's broken, um, could be a caliper that's leaking somewhere. So um, you want to make sure that you're staying safe and you want to pull something out of a the field. There's a lot of stuff you got to think about. Um, you know, old belts, belts can snap, you could lose your water pump and overheat. You know, charging problem, battery could die in the middle of the highway. No power steering, power steering could fail. This has power steering, which is nice, but you know, things to keep in mind. So some of the other cons to, to this thing, um, it's just operating it. So the driving it is not very forgiving. So for example, it has power steering, but the power steering is from the 70s, so it's incredibly vague. And lots of times you have no idea what's going on. That said, it makes it easy to drive. Um, but things like the suspension, the brakes, it's all really, again, not forgiving. It's, it's got a really high center of gravity. The suspension is working really hard because this thing weighs a lot. I've been meaning to get it out to the scales to find out how much it actually weighs, but it's at least three tons. So about 6,000 pounds. It gets out of its own way, but you're not gonna be winning any races. And it is a little nerve wracking to drive it on the highway. You get blown around by the wind a lot. It's very loud. Even if it didn't have an exhaust leak, it would still be loud and it just moves around a lot. So you gotta be pretty confident. It's not gonna drive like a modern car. If you're not comfortable driving something that's this big and heavy and kind of unruly, you might wanna look elsewhere or at least look at something a little newer because this is from the 70s. So it's got old leaf springs, old suspension design. Um, this one actually has the heavy duty spring or heavy duty shock and spr like strut basically. It's a shock with a coil spring around it, like a helper spring for the front coil springs that kind of make it ride a little better in the front, but I think that's just the deal with the weight. Some of the other things you might not really consider being that this is this old, some of the, you know, gauges and instrument cluster stuff doesn't work like the speedometers in miles per hour and it doesn't work great. It's kind of all over the place, but that's just the way that they're working. So I use a GPS speedometer phone, like a phone app. Uh, but also this fan in particular doesn't have air conditioning. So I've got a little 12 volt fan pointed at me that kind of works, but normally I have the window down. And you know, I think ultimately what it comes down to is how much do you want to spend? Because the reality is, unless you're going to be living in your van, it's going to be hard to justify the cost of full-blown sprinter van, all the van life stuff that you all see on the internet. It's nice, looks cool, but unless it's gonna replace your lodging, it's hard to justify the cost. For this type of thing where we use it in the summer for camping, you know, spending in the realm of, you know, a few thousand dollars overall makes more sense. So if that's your goal. If you're really only gonna be using it maybe a thousand kilometers a year, you know, gotta weigh your options. But at the end of the day, between all the pros and cons, 
it costs less to buy one of these, it costs less to renovate them. And they have a kind of charm that you're never gonna get with a Sprinter van or a Transit van or a Dodge or whatever it is. But it's gonna be a lot more work. It's gonna be more money to get it to where you want it to be. But then you won't have to spend all that time and money on something complicated like that, so. So another thing to keep in mind with something that's old like this is it's generally gonna have a lot less safety features. For example, you'll never see us reaching over because this thing's only got lap belts. Obviously, there's no airbags, no real crumple zones. So it's not as safe of a vehicle by modern standards, but it depends how much that matters to you. Let's just put it this way. If you hit a modern Hyundai accent in one of these things, you're gonna win, but it's not gonna be pretty. Like I said, all in all, it really it comes down to what you wanna spend. You know, if you're gonna do it as a weekend warrior or for camping trips during the summer season, an old van's probably the way to go. It's gonna be less upfront costs, it's gonna cost the same to renovate. You can spend 10, 20 grand on renovating the inside if you really want to, but you know, that way at least you start out with something that didn't cost $80,000 to begin with. For us, we like the charm of it. We're gonna be able to make it our own. We won't feel bad about painting stuff and cutting stuff, drilling holes and stuff, because you know, it was an old van that wasn't in great shape to begin with. So if we can make it better in our own, then I think that's a plus. Hopefully this helps you make your decision as to whether you want to get into a newer van or an older one. If you think I missed anything or there's anything that you can think of, or if you have any experience buying an old van and doing kind of what we're doing, feel free to throw them down in the comments. And uh, I'm no expert, but uh, I've experienced this thing. Thought it helped some of you out. So, see you next time.